Hello, uh, welcome to a new video log. I'm sort of using a new program at the moment. I'm using Camtasia Studio just to see how this works, and I actually quite like it. The editing so far has been quite good. And so today's picture, um, it's not. This is not my cat actually, but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do like a painted portrait type image, and. I thought my cat, he looks very regal, he looks quite like an emperor here, and I thought, well, you know, what would be quite cool is if we could like, so maybe add some sort of human clothing. So I looked for like the 1700 military dress uniform. When I think of emperor, I sort of think of the Emperor Napoleon, so I was probably trying to go for more of a French style, um, and this is what I came up with. Um, I'm not going to use the whole suit, as you will see, and... I'm just going to use this little neck region. So the first thing we have to do is really take these two images and put them into Photoshop. So in Photoshop, I had to begin uh, creating a composite. So I really was just flicking around uh, the image and trying to make this sort of the two images merge together. I decided to just res resize the clothing because that'll be easiest. And then I was trying to find different ways that I could actually sort of maybe mask them together. Also, remove somehow remove the background just to give us a nice clean composite. It, nothing really was working too well, um, especially like masking both of them. So what I ended up doing was I, because I had the dress uniform on top, I then just masked in the cat and left its background here for a minute. Um, and I, you know, when I did the selection with the one tool, it did leave it a little bit messy as well. I also wanted to sharpen the features. Uh, it was just the picture of the camera actually taken on my phone, um, and it's not the sharpest camera in the world. Uh, obviously, it would be better if I had used my digital SLR or something like that. But you know, you work with what you work with in these cases. Um, I think the overall quality of the central image is not so important because we're just going to be taking the colors out of it. Um, and so I created the composite that is here. So the composite looks pretty good, I think, you know. Um, obviously it's not perfect, but it doesn't have to be perfect for what we're going to do. So the next thing I want to do is just create the background that I wanted to have. Um, and once again, I was trying to select the background from the cat. And this was another one of these things of how do I, you know, how will I do this? Um, I was sort of playing around with the selector tool, the brush tool, sort of, you know, brushing in the background. And they're quite vague. And I thought, well, this is all getting a little bit stupid um, because I'm just going to paint the cat over the top. So one, I just have my background, just fill the whole background, and then select some pattern uh, to use to sort of give it this sort of painted effect. Uh, I actually went with some uh, watercolor paper at first. Cause I thought that looks quite that looks quite nice. So from here, I was then thinking, well, let's try and you know get the cat. We now have to mask the, mask the composite, basically. Um, so what I did is I, I selected everything uh, outside the cat and then inverted it. So I selected the background, inverted it, and then I decided it would be easier to mask in the cat than to actually mask out the background. So that's what I'm just sort of doing now. Um, yeah, whiskers are pretty <laughs> pretty hard things to, <laughs> to mask around, really. Sometimes you just erase them all together. I know it's just to sort of keep in uh, details. Obviously, I do have because I did um, do my high pass sharpening, so I do have uh, a copy of that layer still. So I can still use that if I need to, you know, just to sort of um, sharpen any details that I want. So as you can see, I just sort of um, I go out and then I go back in, and it's because it's easier sometimes to push to fill in the mask and then sort of just gently go around just to smooth it around. Next thing I want to do is just to make sort of a vignette. This is just to darken the background um, a little bit just so I can have a feel of what this background is going to look like with the with the image. At the moment it doesn't actually too look it doesn't actually look too bad. It looks quite amateurish because nothing is done been done cleanly. But as I said this is not so important at the moment. So here's where I work around and try and find it naming some layers just so I can remember what is where. I duplicate the, the high pass filtering. It looks pretty nice using the masks. Next thing I was going to do is just um, do this sort of sketch layer. Um, I use Neon Glow and then uh, converted it to black and white. 
and now I'm just sort of trying to find the best uh, way to do this. I've just changed the background um, texture to a canvas because um, I thought the canvas actually probably look a little bit better. Now I'm using the palette knife filter, and what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to use the filter on the layer, and then I'm going to uh, actually paint on a ma um, paint on a mask to actually get the feeling of a painted effect, if that makes sense. Uh, one of the things is I need to paint on the mask, but I've used the mask to you know isolate the the, the composite. So the reason the way I go around that was I just use the mask and when I apply it, when, when I, del I, I deleted the mask, and in doing so, you get the option to either to apply or just to delete. And I applied it, um, meaning that it actually erases um, the selection, which is quite good. I'm not just setting up my brush. Uh, this is the uh, large, larger brush. Yeah. And what I what you, what you have to do is sort of paint onto the, paint onto the mask. Using different brush size, using different brush sizes, trying uh, alternately uh, changing the opacity when you when you need to, and really just being very sort of inaccurate <laughs> in a sort of way. You just want to sort of paint in the details because this is just going to be the sort of base layer. So you're sort of sketching in the different the different areas. So from here, I'm just sort of uh, sketching in the general things I need to sketch in. Uh, obviously, like. Things which are not so detailed, you can just use a big brush and just brush it over. Slightly more detailed things, you can actually use a slightly smaller brush. So as I get to the eyes, I just zoom in a little bit just so I can see the eyes a little bit better. And you just get a general feel. Now because you're using the brush on the mask, you actually get the feel of the brush, not just as a filtered effect. And you can actually see the brush strokes. And because I'm, I've got it on a 50% opacity, it means that although, um, although I can like brush one area, um, as the brush layers, some you can actually see the, the differences between the different strokes. Obviously, if I just brush one layer like over and over, one section over and over again, it would look really, really smooth. Like the nose does, the nose just looks really smooth at the moment. So here, what I'm doing is I'm actually now using the smudge tool, uh, just to smudge in areas of detail. Uh, that's what I'm just sort of using it for. And of course, you know, with it not being like um, so perfect, you sort of get these gaps as well. So this is a bit like just like sketching with the paintbrush in a way. Um, obviously, using going different directions, different stroke sizes with your with the brush tool. I'm using um, a pen on a tablet, uh, slightly because I feel it's you know slightly more natural. You can use a mouse, but then again, you know it's one of those things with the mouse. I always find the mouse a little bit less accurate. This one I'm gonna do is gonna apply. Um, a uh, layer style, and then apply the palette knife, and then apply the slight levels just to lighten it a little bit. And this is once again enough for, for the for the effect, really. I changed the brush this now to a rough round brush brush, and just um, checking all my settings. I actually had it on the smudge tool. I need to switch over to the brush tool. And then this time, what you can, what you do is using once in different stroke sizes, you know, just fill in the detail. More detailed areas need to have a smaller brush, and larger detailed areas, um, not so detailed areas need a lot, need a larger brush. So that's why I start off with the eyes. This is the detail. This is the, for me in a portrait. This is the most, where the most detail has to sort of be. You have to sort of capture the eyes there. And then everything else can have slightly. Less detail away, and once again using the brush and then having the layer style, you get this um, textured look to the brush. I'm just sort of trying to just once again using shorter strokes and then longer strokes with the large, shorter strokes with the small brush, longer strokes with a large brush. Sort of like dabbing as well in different places, and just filling in, just filling it around. And you can sort of just see the texture now. It actually starts to look more like a painting than just a filter effect put on top. And of course, using a mask, you get the details um, which are below. So you don't have to like paint the whole thing. You can leave gaps um, just to have it a nice look. But anything you want to have detailed, you don't leave the gaps on. 
uh, leaf gaps in. What I have to do is duplicate that again. Um, I, erased, I erased the mask by going edit fill with the mask selected and set it black. And then I just changed the brush. This time I'm removing the texture on the brush. And so what this means is um, anything which is detailed, I can now paint, I can now go over again, but this time removing the texture just to make it look cleaner. Um, make it look as if it had more of a detailed brush used. So it's flicking. Now, now some areas are still quite light, and um, I will fix that in a moment. Um, I actually have a, the next step is to fix this sort of light. So if you're thinking it's a bit too, bit too light for me, yeah, we'll fix it. We'll go over and we'll just fix that in one minute. So just sort of having a look, flicking, you know, turn on off layers is quite a way just to see what you've had to, what you've done. It's sort of like going through a history state and going, ah, oh, we need to have that change, we need to have that change. But at the minute it looks pretty, it looks pretty nice. The background looks a bit odd, but we'll fix the background. Don't worry about that. Um, so what I just created now is a new a new layer. I've copied the the layer style from the previous layer, and what I'm doing now is I'm selecting uh, individual colors, um, for to just to add final bits of detail. So with the eyes, I added, I got a. Like a a uh, yellow color for the eyes, the, um, a slightly off black for the um, scar lines that the cat has, um, a red, and I want to get back to the gold for the actual jacket itself. Now I've, I've used the high pass, I've now put the high pass layer on, and what that done is actually uh, brought out any missing sort of details, because um, there's obviously the sharpening layer, which sort of adds an extra effect on top again. But this sort of gives you sort of like white flecks um, in the fur, and it just adds the, the sharpness to the image. I was playing around with clouds uh, just to try and get a nice a feel for the background, and then what I'm going to do is just quickly go with a larger brush, and uh, quickly go through the um, same procedure, but more rushed because obviously the background is not so important. So um, because it's just a plain color. So all I'm looking to do is just to create this very sort of, you know, similar styled background um, to the way that I did the actual painting on the cat. Uh, and just to make it look like it's not just a, a composite of two layers put together. So just like clicking around. And obviously the, the darkness bit is actually from the vignette. The vignette is still on and it's actually working quite nicely. Uh, in this particular in this particular instance. Now I'm just going to adjust the vignette and once that's done just I added a vibrance uh, layer just to just boost that color a little bit. It was a little bit lacking um, that was from the levels it just sort of because it sort of um, brightened the image it just sort of made it a little bit flatter. And that is really the final image um, completely done. It takes, it's about an hour and a half process uh, from putting the composite together. So it's, it's a little bit lengthy, um, but it's not too long. Obviously, if it's um, a, slight, uh, a better quality image, you may want to have uh, spend a little more time, especially on the details. Um, you, if it's if you're doing it of a person, not of a cat, um, the lips and the eyes, these are the two things you really need to uh, have filled in with a lot of detail. Whereas with the, um, if you had like some neck region, you could sort of leave this a little bit more um, sparsely painted just to give a nice little effect. And there we go. I quite like it. It's a, I know it's not traditional photography photography. It's more like photoshopped. But I think it's one of those things that if you can offer it to somebody and say, hey, I can do this, you know, for an image. Or even if you want to do it for yourself, um, it's sort of. And maybe save you some money or save you some time or give you a unique selling point. So there you go. Emperor Crichton. That's how I have named it. My cat is called Crichton. And he looks like he is an emperor in this. Until next time, uh, I, will, I will see you. Remember to head over to my blog, aperture64.wordpress.com. I'm also on Twitter, at aperture64. And I now have a Tumblr account, at aperture64. So how can you forget it? Everything's aperture64 now. Okay. Bye-bye.